Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about the spider pole made by spider beams in Germany. I've had uh, quite a few questions over the past year or so about uh, these products, the various length of poles I make. And uh, these questions, some of them are repetitive. Will it support this? Will it support that? Will it do this? Will it do that? And I thought it would be good to uh, do an updated video on the uh, spider pole and answer some of the questions that you've asked and also answer some of the questions that you haven't asked but you'd like to know the answers to. So this is the purpose of this video. Well, thank you once again for joining me on this video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my amateur radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Julian Victor. The subject of the video today is fiberglass poles. As ham radio operators, most of us need to erect antennas and many of us need some form of support. We don't always have trees in the right place. Some of us haven't got trees at all. So if we haven't got any means of support, we need to create one. And one of the most popular ways of creating supports is the fiberglass mast. Now there's quite a few of them about and I have put a link below this video to a video that's not by me, by somebody else that tested the fiberglass mask and it's quite interesting. The first part of the video is quite interesting in terms of assessing the difference between various fiberglass masks. Now I have chosen to use the spider pole made by spider beams. The spider pole is a fiberglass mask and it comes in various lengths. And if you go onto our websites, and I'll try to put a link below this video, uh, you'll see the various lengths that are available. The most popular one by uh, a large measure of amount is the 12HD. 12 means it's 12 meters long, and HD means it's got a rugged construction. Now, 12 meters means to say that you can go up to, what, 40 feet in uh, old money terms. And there's various ways that you can use fiberglass masks, but also they've got strengths and weaknesses. And it's important to understand what you can and what you can't do with a fiberglass mast. There are different qualities, of course, and there is no real absolute measure of quality, but the, the price basically gives you some indication. And we have uh, stuck with the spider beams, um, spider pole, because it's proved to be very strong. I've got the 12 meter HD version. I've had it for five years now, and it's still doing great um, work in the garden. It's been out in the garden for five years. And really and truly, there's no noticeable deterioration at all. So with that, let's look at the fiberglass mast and how it may or may not fit into your garden and do what you want it to do. The strength of a fiberglass pole is in the vertical. It's very strong in that direction. But our fiberglass pole is a lot weaker in that direction. Pull it there or there and it will bend. It probably won't break, but it will bend because it's flexible. So it's not so good in supporting lateral loads. Its strength is in the vertical. There are three antenna scenarios in which it is really good. Run a wire up the vertical to form a vertical conductor. And you've got, for example, a quarter wave vertical. It's very, very strong in that respect. It's also good as an inverted V support. That works extremely well. And it's also good as a support for a dipole. If, for example, you had a tree at that end, and you had a mast at that end, and you have a wire going across there, there's normally a sag in the middle. But if you use this to support the center of the dipole, you will get rid of the sag. And in fact, what you can do is you can make that slightly taller so that the dipole actually goes up like that. Because that point on a dipole, the center of a dipole is where maximum radiation occurs. 
So let's take a look at the spider pole in uh, more detail. The bottom there you've got a rubber uh, cap there that goes on that stops the tubes falling out because if you want to take the tubes out you pull them out from the bottom not the top because the top they're designed to screw and uh, screw and they sort of jam to uh, stop it falling down then you screw the other way and it unjams a crude way of describing it that's the way it works And if you look up the end of the spider pole, you can see all the sections nestled in there. And the sections pull out, as you can see. And uh, this one, of course, is uh, 12 metres, so there's quite a few sections to pull out. Um, I take the two top sections out of mine in order to give it strength. It still gives me uh, a mast that's 30 foot high. But if you're going to use it to support a vertical, then, of course, you don't need to take the sections out. But I take the two top, top sections out. It gives me a bit of extra support. Because the top of the tubes are hollow and open, uh, when you remove a couple of sections, you do make want to make sure that you cover it up so that the rain doesn't get in there because it will accumulate over a period of time. So just put something over the top to seal it if you're removing several sections. A quick shout out for Waters on Stanton. This channel is run on behalf of Walters and Stanton. We've been established for 50 years and we pride ourselves in our customer service and backup service. You know, you can buy a plug or a connector from anybody and it's probably quite okay, at least it should be. But when it comes to the more serious things like transceivers, aerials and all the other technical accessories, you want the reassurance that if something goes wrong, you'll get the backup. Or if you've got a question about it, you'll get an honest answer. And I take a particular interest in the way that we support customers. So if you're thinking about buying something which needs technical support, then give Waters and Stanton a call or go on their website. And if you've got any questions, give them a call and talk to one of our salespeople. They'd be glad to help you because they're all licensed amateurs. Thank you for your support. So let's now go out into the garden and have a look at my installation, how I've erected the fiberglass mast and how I'm using it. Well, I've chosen a rather overcast day. You wouldn't believe it's July, middle of the summer, but it's pretty overcast. Anyway, and I'm using it as a support for the center of my uh, half size 5RV. And uh, there's the center support. It goes up around about 25 feet uh, to support the centre of the half-size 5RV. I've used uh, hose clips to stop the mast slipping back and it's important that you put the hose clip around the base of a section to stop it slipping down. You don't put it at the top of a section to grip the section above. I'll just show you the hose clip there. Now to support it, I've used a section of I think called Dexian, Dexian angle iron. The good thing about that is because it's angled, 90 degree angle there, the actual mass sits snugly into the angle iron and uh, gives it a good support. And again, I've used hose clips to clamp the mast to the Dexian. Some people have said hose clips will deteriorate. Well, I've had hose clips out for about three years now and they haven't deteriorated, but obviously keep an eye on them. But that's a, a convenient and easy way of supporting your fiberglass mast at uh, ground level. And there you see the uh, antenna. It does a pretty good job, really. It's not particularly high, but uh, I get very good results from it. I think there's a bird perching on the top of my two metre antenna. How dare it! Now the other end of my antenna, or at one end, I've got a spider mass, which I um, had now for about five years. And it does a very good job. It's uh, quite amazing. It's amazing strength and uh, it's as good as it was when I first installed it. Let me just show you how I've installed it. A lot of rubbish behind the shed now, but I basically I've got a bit of angle iron there and again I've used the Jubilee clip to support it and they've held it there for about three years now no problem at all and the mast itself um, 
it's got clamps and they work extremely well and again bear in mind that this mast looks almost new but it's five years old so i'm very pleased with it it's very easy to uh, telescope up and down and it's uh, done me a very good job so fiberglass masts they're very effective provided you use them for the right purpose and they are very lightweight and it looks as if they're going to last a long time at least <laughs> mine has anyway uh, i suppose the lesson is buy a decent one to start with if you buy a cheap one you may well have to buy another cheap one in uh, two or three years time so anyway it's, it's a it's a personal choice um i've as i said used the spider pole and uh, there's very popular uh, fiberglass mast and we've, all, we've sold loads of them and it does enable you to get your antenna up in the air where you perhaps you can't. Of course, you could, I mean, some people would just sort of stick them up in trees. You could get a fairly tall spider pole and you can stick it up between the branches and the tree will actually tend to support it. So that's another way. And, uh, well, there's all sorts of ways you can, you can support it. My way is, is it works okay. It's, I wouldn't say it's long term. It needs a bit of um, refinement, shall I say. But my antennas tend to be forever changing. So that suits me. But anyway, I hope that's given you some guide on uh, fiberglass masks and uh, what it can and can't do. And that may well enable you to buy the right thing or not buy one because you think it's not going to uh, support your antenna. And of course, they're great for uh, portal work as well. A lot, of, a lot of the stations use them for portal work. Uh, they're very lightweight. There we are. So anyway, I hope it's been helpful. Thank you for watching this video. Much appreciated. If you want to buy a spider, pole or a spider mast then we've got them in stock go on our website and you can see them and uh, there's all sorts of links so uh, i think the longest spider pole is about 70 feet well there we are that uh, give you a, a quarter wave on 80 meters anyway take a look in the meantime enjoy your ham radio and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now